Welcome to Fork in the Loaf. My name is Heather and today I'm going to show you how I make my sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is one of those things that I kind of find as, as a superfood. My mother uh, dealt with GERDs pretty bad and sauerkraut would help calm, instantly calm all that burning that she would feel from heartburn and stuff like that. Um, I introduced it to some other friends and they swear by it as well. So I keep sauerkraut on hand all the time for my mom and for my husband and I don't really have issues with sauerkraut or with, with heartburn, but my mom really did for a while and then she found other ways to heal her. She's actually healed it to where she can have oats and beans and stuff like that again, although we are doing keto so it doesn't, that's not part of our diet. Um, so to show you how I make my sauerkraut, which it's high in probiotics, it's a vegetable, it's cabbage, it's beautiful stuff. So I'm gonna go wash this off real quick. It's looking pretty dirty. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh our bowl. And I do, you, you do want to have a scale. So I have seen some people that just do X amount of salt for every head of cabbage, but I have found that every head of cabbage is a different size. I have had from kraut making cabbages that are about that big to this is a pretty normal size cabbage head. And then I just had some really small ones that I just made. I mean, literally the size of a softball. So it really depends on what size your head of cabbage is. So I have learned to just do it by weight. Um, so I've got my scale. I have my scale set to grams. See the G is grams. And now I'm going to put my bowl on there. And my bowl is 788 grams. I hope you can see that okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take off the top um, I'm going to remove the outer leaf and save it and it is not wanting to remove well. I don't really like to save that kind of stuff or this, there's a black stuff on here. So I'm just going to take off this and just keep some pieces that look clean and it doesn't, I'm going to be using a quart size jar because I'm hoping this should fit in there, okay? This should be plenty of leaf to use on top of that, and I'll show you why. Find the core, and then I'm going to put that on the bottom, and I'm going to cut through so that I have two halves with a core. Now I'm gonna quarter it, and I'm going to remove this core. Chickens love this stuff. And it is one degree outside right now. It is cold. So I'll take this stuff to my chickens. One of the things that I found with making sauerkraut is you make it too big and too long, it gets messy. Like you go to eat a bite of it and you got a strand hanging. I, that drives me crazy. So I have them cut into eights. Let's see up in the best. There you go. Now I know you can see what I'm seeing. And I'm just going to thinly, you can do it as thin or as thick as you like. The thicker it is, the crunchier it's gonna be. But this even hand shredding it like this, it's going to be thicker than when I shred it with my food processor. Some people think that's easier. <laughs> I'd rather cut it than clean up the food processor. <laughs> You do you. you. However you like to do it, you do it. it. All that matters is that you are chopping up the cabbage. So I'm gonna finish chopping this up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now I know um, that took me about two or three minutes. That's all it took to chop all that. Um, so I know that this bowl weighs 788 grams. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my bowl of cabbage 
and it's at 1732. This is 944 grams of cabbage. Now I'm gonna take that 944 and I'm gonna multiply that by 0.02 because we're looking for 2% of the weight. And that is 18.88 grams. So I'm gonna round it up to 19 because that's really close to 19 grams. I'm gonna take a bowl, a little small bowl. I'm gonna zero it out because I'm gonna just pour salt right now. I have a couple different options. The one salt you don't want to use is table salt. This is kosher salt, which means there's no iodine added and it's all kinds of good stuff. You can use kosher salt. You can use, I use Himalayan pink salt. You could use real Redmond's real salt. You could use anything but a table salt. A table salt has things added to it. Um, I have not tried it with table salt. So really you could use almost any kind of salt for it. Okay, there is 19 grams of salt. Okay. There is nothing harder than being on the keto diet, diet and still baking fresh baked bread for your family. <laughs> Just came out of the oven. <clears throat> all right, so now I have all my cabbage and I have my salt and it's all weighed out. It's 2% salt to the weight of the cabbage. At this point, you can mix it with your hands. I don't love salt getting all over my hands. I get it in my nails and kind of feels like it dries things out a little bit. So I'm literally just stirring the salt in right now to mix it all the way through all this cabbage. And now I'm just gonna let this sit here for about a half an hour. And I just want you to take a look at what it looks like now. And when we come back in a half an hour, I will show you what's gonna happen to it. And look, it's already starting to sweat. You'll see water starting getting extracted from there from the salt. So you're really just trying to mix that salt in really good so it gets to all the cabbage and starts that sweat process. So at this point, I'm just gonna walk away and I'll come back in about a half an hour and I'll get back to my video. All right, so I don't know if you can tell, but this has reduced in size just from the sweating. And it's actually been more like 40 minutes just because it's not exact science. You know, I mean, timing is just up to you what you can do. Um, I've heard some people wait an hour, some people wait longer. Um, what I'm going to do is start putting it into my jar. I have this thing, this is my my great grandmother's, maybe my great, I think it's my great grandmother's mashed potato thing. Um, and you can pound this with this, but again, I, I just an extra step that's I don't find necessary. So I'm just gonna mix this in. Now I get to put my hands in the salt water anyway. Uh, I've got a wide mouth mason jar. This is not mason actually, this is a, an old mayonnaise jar, but this works perfect for this because I can't can with it. And I'm just gonna start shoving this in here and this may not be big enough. So this is when this comes in handy. I'm gonna take it and I'm just going to press it down. I wish, I don't know if you can see the juice, the fluid that's coming up here. I might be able to get it in here. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Darn it, I just put all that in there and just lost it all. So I'm not gonna get all of my cabbage in here. I only have about this much left. And really, it is okay to take a piece of your cabbage and taste it. It should taste salty like seawater salty. Mmm, that was so yummy. <laughs> so now that I have all this in here, and all this juice is literally from the cabbage, 
I didn't add any water to this. If I did need to, usually the older the cabbage, the more likely it is you might need to add a little water to it. Um, the older it is, the more dry it gets. Uh, I've had some cabbage where it was so fresh, it just tons of water from it. I'm gonna try and get this in here. And I just keep pressing. All right, so this is where I'm gonna take this uh, this cabbage leaf. And the whole point of the cabbage leaf is to keep all those small pieces of cabbage down. So that you don't have a bunch of these little teeny tiny floaty cabbages on the top. I have these glass pucks so I'm going to keep that there so that everything stays underneath and it's going to make a mess. And then I have these mason pickle pipes or pickle something or others. Mason top. Mason top pickle pickle pipes or something. I don't remember what they're called. I can put a link down below. I'm, I'm not affiliated or anything. I'm not affiliated with anything. I just have preferences and things. So one of the ways, one of the ways that I really make sure I'm paying attention to how long it's been sitting, uh, cause it is really easy to forget when you made it, especially when you make it as often as I do. Today's January 1st. So I'm gonna do one, one, 22. <laughs> And this will be ready. I could, we can start eating it in seven days. So like it, it literally is, it's actually edible right now, but it won't have any of the probiotics. So in about seven days is when it starts to become like a sauerkraut. I'd like to go two weeks. So um, come the 14th, 15th of January, this will be totally ready to be eaten. Um, you can go months. So this is a preservation method that they've used to use. As a matter of fact, they still use them. I kind of feel like we, it's a lost art with us Americans. So I um, do, I usually make this, I make it all the time and I do it so that cause I like the probiotics. It works as a side dish. Um, like if I'm just being lazy and I just want to have a burger patty or a hot dog even, and then I will just have a scoop of this instead of a vegetable. Um, I like, I'm trying to think what else. If you cook it, you'll kill the probiotics in it. However, um, I, I know people still cook with their sauerkraut, but I think sauerkraut, when you buy sauerkraut canned, you're not getting the probiotic benefits. And part of the reason that I do sauerkraut is to have the probiotics. So I always eat my sauerkraut fresh. I never ever cook it. Uh, you can cook it. If I'm going to cook it, I might as well just go to the store and buy a canned or I have thought about making a canned sauerkraut specifically for some of the stuff that I cook. Like I'll do a pork with sauerkraut and potatoes and put it in the crock pot and let it cook all day like that. And it's actually fabulous. Um, but I make the fresh stuff specifically for the probiotic benefits, the lactic acid benefits, all those benefits of fermentation. So, um, I have seen people put stuff like caraway seeds in it. I've seen garlic put in it. I really prefer it just as is. I don't love caraway seeds. That's my own picky. Whatever, you know, you can try it with caraway seeds if you like them. Um, you can put, there's all different kinds of stuff that you make very similar to this. Kimchi has a bunch of stuff in it. Maybe I'll do a... a I might do a recipe on kimchi one of these days as well because I love kimchi. My husband and I both will eat that all the time. I would eat kimchi before I'd eat sauerkraut. This here's a sauerkraut that I made a while ago. It's been in my fridge. It will last for months. Um, I keep, once I get done fermenting it, I always put mine in the fridge. I have enough fridge space that I can do that. And we go through it so fast that it never lasts months. 
I have seen some people make mass quantities of this and I've heard of them just leaving it on their shelves. I don't have, sh I don't want to say I don't have, sh I, I guess I just don't have faith in that yet. I haven't tried it long enough to see how it does on the shelf for long periods of time. I do know that the one that I have tried that sat a little longer, it seems like it went off fast. So I, I just prefer to do it this way where I keep a cycle going. It's so easy. It just takes just time. I mean, it, it takes maybe, like right now, it's, it's maybe taken me an hour to do this whole thing. But a lot of that hour, at least 40 minutes of that hour was sent sitting down or doing something else. So to me, it's not really that much more. It was easier for me to make it than go to the store and buy it. Although I did have to go get the cabbage, but I already had the cabbage. So I, anyway, um, I would say give it a try though. It's not scary. You will know if it's bad. If it's growing circular spots of hairy stuff on the top when you go and open it, you know that it's bad. If it smells foul, not sour, but foul, you'll know it's bad. So, I mean, it's, it's really easy to tell when it's gone bad. There is something called cam's yeast that can grow on some. It's like a white, um, a white, sur it grows on the surface and it looks, I'm going to say like a wet powder. I don't know how to explain it, like pasty almost. Anyway, so it looks like a very thin layer of white stuff. That's cam's yeast. That's not even mold. Mold will have round spots and they are hairy and they're blue often. So it's, a, it's different and you'll be able to smell it. And as you get more, so your first time, you're just looking for it to look just like that. Um, it'll be that yellow golden color there. I didn't have anything on the surface of mine. Um, I've never had anything on the surface of my sauerkraut. These I've used these lids for, um, uh, fermenting before I even had these. And I would literally just kind of keep it on there like finger tight so the air could still escape and it wouldn't break my jar. You could also use tighter lids, the ones that, air, that are airtight, and then just go burp it every day. And not so all you do to burp it, just go like this and close it. And that will let the gases escape without breaking your jars. When I put this in my cupboard, and I keep it in my cupboard to keep it out of sunlight, I will put it in a bowl because it will, uh, as the gases are released and this expands from the fermentation process, it will leak some fluid. And I would really rather just clean it out of a jar than clean it out of the surface of my cupboard. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them down below. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, share this with your friends. And if there's enough questions, I mean, I, I haven't had a ton of questions on anything yet, but I will post, I can always do another one later. Thank you for joining with me on this adventure on a fork in the loaf, and I will see you next time.